Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Everything You Need to Know guide. Today we are in the borough of Queens and we are going to be exploring the neighborhoods of Jackson Heights and Woodside. This area of New York has a huge special place in my heart because my most viewed video ever, which has 3.8 million views, was shot right here in the Little Manila area. So we're going to be exploring this whole neighborhood, but I want to remind you guys to subscribe and turn on those notifications so you don't miss a single video because we're exploring every notable neighborhood in New York City, every borough, everything you need to know about this city. And before we do anything else, let's roll the intro. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the video. Today I have another special guest with me. This is John Barr from Here Be Come Barr. On. Good friend of mine, a local from New York. We are exploring this neighborhood. Are you excited to explore this today? I love Jackson Heights, Woodside as well. In my opinion, this is one of the most underrated neighborhoods in all of New York City. And when you told me I could come, I jumped on the chance. <laughs> this is like the best foodies neighborhood ever. It's gonna be fun. Uh, we're starting the video off bright and early here in Diversity Plaza. This is like the epitome of this neighborhood put into one site. It's called Diversity Plaza because I'm pretty sure that Jackson Heights and Woodside are the most, most ethnically diverse neighborhoods in New York City. You can find everyone from East Asians, Southeast Asians, Hispanics. It doesn't matter what nationality you want, you can find them somewhere here in this neighborhood. And so Diversity Plaza is this big kind of chill out area with tables and chairs. Where we're gonna find a bunch of people from a bunch of different nationalities just hanging around as well. There's food trucks and food carts all over the place and really specially themed ones. It's just a really cool place to start your journey as well. I should mention the subway stops kind of lead you out right here into Diversity Plaza. So it's a great place to begin your adventure here in Jackson Heights and Woodside. Anything else to add? I just want to agree with Tal that this is by far the most diverse part of New York City. If, it, if New York's a melting pot, this is like the very bottom where everything is just like squished together. You hear so many languages walking around here. This is an area that just deserves more attention. Yeah, and we're gonna bring that today. So let's hop on over to our next location. Oh, Little Indias aren't so prevalent in big cities around the world, but Woodside and Jackson Heights, as you can hear from the music as well, this is kind of like your little Italy, little Bangladesh, little Indian Bangladeshi ethnic area. And so you're gonna have Indian restaurants, Indian shops all over the place. We're gonna hop over to a few. John actually knows a really cool spot that we're gonna try to see if we can hit up and, and check out. If it's not too busy. If it's not too busy. very busy. We're also here on a weekend, and so there's people out on the streets, but you can hear there's music, there's food. It just smells like curry out here. It's it's incredible. All right, Johnny boy, where are we? Where have we come to? So we're going to a spot called Lhasa Fast Food. It's the equivalent of a speakeasy restaurant. You have to go walk through a cell phone store. They have delicious Tibetan momos. They've won a lot of awards. Super cheap, like $6. You get eight of them. Such an amazing value. And I mean, if we're going to make our first stop count, this is definitely the place. You're, we're like, yeah, it's like, so and we're walking through the back here. <laughs> this is so cool. The issue is, the issue is there's like three tables. <laughs> Do you think we could take to go? Maybe. Yeah. Let's see if we can get to it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have our little bowl of momos here. It comes kind of like in a dim sum format. And I think the shape of these dumplings are very reminiscent to the ones I've had in Siberia. Very different than like Chinese dumplings, for example, or gyoza from Japan. But I'm assuming the flavor is probably pretty similar. I'm excited to try it. We got some soy sauce down here. This thing is piping hot, so it's really gonna hurt, but I'm excited. Yeah. Mm. Oh my God, I was wrong. That tastes so different. It's really, really delicious. It's got kind of like a, a sour flavor. I almost think what would be better is to just bite a piece, drink the juice, and then eat the dumpling normally. <laughs> a lot of juice in there. Check out, guys, that's the meatball that's inside. I, I accidentally had it fall out. How is it? It's very good, and the hot sauce is very hot, but like, I don't need an excuse to come back here. Thank you, Tal, for inviting me. This is a fantastic experience. Highly recommend checking this place out. All right, you can see how narrow that hallway is. It's packed with people. We just got out, though. That was absolutely incredible. That was a great experience here in Queens. All right, so our next spot is called Karishma, Karimi, Karishima. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce it exactly, but it's like a traditional Indian clothing store. I heard that it has really great reviews and a lot of people go shopping here. I think the price tag is a little expensive, but that's because it is very authentic. It's very cool to check out. So it's literally just next door from the Momo place that we just visited. So definitely come check it out if you want to check out some cool Indian clothing. So we are just currently walking through the little India area and uh, all around you basically you can see just Indian food stores and you know halal meat places, Indian food trucks, carts, whatever you want. Um, and it's just a fantastic experience. I was just telling John, it really feels like you are in a different country when you're walking around here, but 
the architecture is so specifically New York that it kind of brings you back to reality of what city you're actually in. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I was just telling Tal as we were walking, he passed a place that said like Afghan food and then someone was driving blasting like Latino music. <laughs> this is such a, a diverse area. I really, I love coming here. Our next spot, we're going to the origins of a lot of great uh, viewership from both of our channels. Yeah. A really exciting neighborhood, or not neighborhood, but part of this neighborhood. We'll see you guys there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have officially made it to Little Manila here in Queens. This is the Woodside part of this video. So we've jumped to the neighborhood. It's like literally a five minute walk from where we were in Jackson Heights. And this is Little Manila. It is a ethnically homogenous Filipino area with tons of Filipino restaurants, grocery stores, restaurants, and there's even a Jollibee here, which is the most famous uh, Filipino fast food restaurant, which we're definitely gonna hit up. But right behind us is the Phil Am Supermarket. What is this place, Johnny Boy? It's essentially a Filipino supermarket. I believe one of the only ones in all of New York City. And Filipino people love to come here to shop. Every time you walk in there, just full of stuff that Tal has had himself when he was in yeah. the Philippines. I've yet to go. But this neighborhood has a special place in my heart because A, it's super unique, and B, my first ever big YouTube video was filmed here about Little Manila, New York's best kept secret. For a lot of us that have traveled to the Philippines, coming to an area that is, you know, ethnically Filipino is, it's like going back home in a way because the people are so friendly. It's just friendly faces, good food, good times, just a nice general vibe. You know you're gonna be safe and friendly and accepted here. So uh, I, I highly recommend coming out to Little Manila and exploring it because it's, it's an underrated area for sure. So guys, this restaurant I wanna pimp out because we came here last time. It's called House of Inasal. It is the best Filipino food I by far have ever had in my life. I had this dish called corn silog, which is like a corned beef kind of rice dish with eggs. It is so good. Best one I ever had was right in there. So definitely 100%, you gotta check it out. Hasa Minasa when you're here if you want delicious Filipino food. So in addition to having Filipino grocery stores, you also have a thing called the Sari Sari store, which is kind of like a Filipino convenience store. I'm actually gonna pop in here. We also visited this place last time we were here. It's got a bunch of the Filipino essentials if you want like, like soaps and shampoos and food or whatever, but they have Filipino beer here, like Red Horse, uh, and I really love that beer. It's my favorite beer ever, so I'm gonna buy some actually and take it home back to Brooklyn. Tal is basically a celebrity in any Filipino style restaurant around the United States that recognize this face. I'm just really happy well. we have Filipino beer now. <laughs> <laughs> My boy. It's the Jolly Bee. Guys, we're back. Last time we were here, this guy was locked inside of a scaffolding. Can we but, take um, him? Can we take him to go? He's pretty heavy. <laughs> it's Jolly Bee time. We're gonna get some fast food. Okay, right, so this place is called the Jolly Bee. When I was living in the Philippines, this was a regular part of my diet. As you can tell, my my voluptuous shape. They have like the most famous uh, fried chicken and fast food in the Philippines. So we're gonna go in there and get a piece of their famous chicken joy, which is their famous fried chicken, and we'll try it on camera for you. Hey, I'm sure it's full. It's always full, huh? All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we have our Jolly Bee goodness. This thing is called the Ube Cooler. It usually has like little tapioca pearls, kind of like a boba tea, but it's like a little Ube drink. Ube is this purple yam that they have in the Philippines and they turn it into a bunch of sweet, delicious things, so. Mmm. I've never had this before today. That is freaking marvelous. Oh, man, that is so good. There is a, a primetime winner of Jolly Bee, but it's the Jolly Bee Chicken Joy. It is what Jolly Bee is famous for, their, their fried chicken. I literally haven't had this in like over a year. I think I haven't had this since Hawaii. Let's try it out. See how it is. If it holds up. Oh god, it's so hot. Now it takes me back. It takes me back to the beautiful tropical islands of the Philippines. I do highly recommend when you're exploring Little Manila in this area. You're gonna want to try this stuff because it is the food from these different countries. So make sure you check it out. We are officially leaving Little Manila. How was your experience here, John? Good as ever, as good as ever. <laughs> it's always good to be back here. We love the Philippines, we love Filipinos. It's a great time here. We are now leaving the Little Manila area. We are going to be jumping off to the more Hispanic part of Woodside and Jackson Heights. Actually, we're going back into Jackson Heights now, crossing over this bridge. So we are gonna go get some delicious Mexican food, maybe a little Venezuelan food, maybe a little Colombian food, we'll see. We're gonna test it out. But we're gonna jump into more of a ethnically Hispanic area. I've made multiple videos about finding good Mexican food in New York, and this awesome travel blogging couple, Greg and Jumi from Food and Footprints, took me here to Cinco de Mayo Market. And only on the weekends in the back, they make these incredible tacos. They're tripa tacos, honestly. 
I think they're the best tacos I've ever had in New York City. The only thing is it's not right in the middle of Manhattan and it's only on weekends, but this is like my hidden gem of New York. And I was telling him how much I wanted a good tripa taco because when I was in Tijuana, I had one for the first time and I loved it. So I'm so excited to get a tripa taco right now. I'm excited to get any taco, especially since John's been hyping this place up since the day I got to New York. I can, I can smell it. I can smell the taco meat from here. So basically walk to the back of a supermarket. Oh, it smells so good. Okay. Okay, Jonathan, what do, we, what do we got here? So we have three tripa tacos. We have one barbacoa, which Tal is going to eat. Uh, when I came here, I said it on camera. This was the best taco I ever had in New York City. And they actually remember us, so I'm happy about that. Um, and I was just showing the, you know, the salsas. You could put a little bit on the plate. This is, this is my wife's style. Put your finger. That's hot. That's pretty hot, yeah. We got these delicious tacos. We got barbacoa, which is kind of more of a shredded beef taco. And then we have the tripas, which is the intestines. But it has a, it's cooked up and fried. Like you can see really deep fried and it's so, so good. <coughs> the red one was hotter. <coughs> I could eat a drink. Huh? So before we came in here, John had mentioned a couple that showed him this place. And by chance, here's the Seriously, couple. by chance. Like, tag us on Instagram, we had no idea. But, How much yeah. do you guys love this place? Oh, we come here all the time. It's like, we came here once, like New Year's Eve 2017. It was freezing outside. We came here, we got the consomme soup, tacos. We were just like blown away. It was like, after we went to Mexico City, we came back here. We're like, yeah, this is the spot. They smell and look delicious, so we appreciate the recommendation. Me and John are about to dig into it. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. That's for a while. Let us know how it is. All right. All right. Mm. Is that it? Instagram. How's that? Wait. What's your name? Oh, you no look words. so happy. No oh words, ma'am. <laughs> this is the happiest I've seen John by far since I've got into New York City. I can't say anything, man. It's just <laughs> meat is so good. This is like I'm in Mexico City. I lived in Mexico City before. I lived in Mexico for like six months. It takes me back. Mm. Okay, let me get in here. I want some too. I've only ever had one tripas taco before in Tijuana, and it was amazing. But I'm gonna try right now here. Be prepared. Oh my god, that is truly incredible. There's so many textures in there of kind of the innards, and then the outside, which is a little more crunchy and a little more chewy, and then the softness on the inside. That is. Incredible. Yeah. Highly recommend this. Muchas gracias. De nada. So part of being here in this area of Jackson Heights in Queens, we can get street food, which is not something you commonly find in a lot of the other places, especially not like Manhattan or Brooklyn. But here in Queens, it's all over the place. So we got some elote or uh, maize. I don't know exactly what the name is for it in Spanish, but it's just, uh, it's a Mexican corn on the cob where they put mayonnaise, chili powder, cheese on it. Take a bite. My face probably is a mess right now, right? Oh yeah. But. It is so freaking delicious. Mm. Five alarm fire. God, I love this so much. Every time I'm in Mexico, it's like the biggest thing I try to get. Ladies and gentlemen, we have talked about how Queens is the borough of diversity. Um, this whole area of Jackson Heights is just crazy diverse. So many different nationalities, religions. Now, I don't know exactly how to pronounce this place, so sorry if I'm butchering the pronunciation. I know that I will. I don't know how to speak any sort of Thai. I don't even know the dialect. So this is the Wat Buddha Thai Tavhorn or Thavhorn Vanaram Buddhist Temple. It's a Thai Buddhist temple. I heard that they're doing a festival here next week for Thai New Year. So maybe keep an eye out for when festivals and stuff are happening when you come here. But come take a look at the outside because it's a really, really unique building. It's unlike anything that I've seen in New York City. It's got a really, really unique architecture that's very traditionally Thai from Thailand. And uh, I highly recommend just checking it out. We're not gonna head inside because I don't practice the religion of Buddhism. And a, a thing for me is that usually when I'm not practicing the religion, I try not to go into the place of worship because I don't wanna you know, do anything that I don't believe in personally, but still really awesome to appreciate from the outside. So make sure you check out this awesome Buddhist temple here in Jackson Heights. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have come down to 37th Avenue. This is your, I don't know, Hispaniola. I don't know exactly what to call the area. It's, it's kind of confusing, but it's a, it's a very ethnically homogenous Hispanic area. So you're gonna have a lot of different Hispanic restaurants, just kind of like the places we went to earlier. Lots of Colombian restaurants, Venezuelan restaurants, Mexican restaurants, anything you want. A lot, of, a lot of Jackson Heights and Woodside is going to be food for you guys. A lot of really, really good food from different places around the world. So this street is gonna be full full of food options. Ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know, Jackson Heights is also the birthplace of Scrabbly Scrabbly Doo. Scrabble the game, the board game that everybody knows and loves. So right here, 
On the 35th Avenue sign, we have these little numbers by each letter of the of the sign indicating kind of the game of Scrabble. Um, it's a tiny little Easter egg here in Jackson Heights. It's something that you might want to check out. It's pretty cool. It's nothing extravagant. It's not like a statue or anything. But if you want to come see the birthplace of Scrabble, it happened right here in this neighborhood. And uh, this is the little street sign commemorating it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have made it to the Jackson Heights subway stop. We are ending this video here. This was such a fantastic neighborhood exploration day. John, did you have a good time? Amazing time. It's such a cool neighborhood, guys. Definitely check it out. It's always a fun time here. Please make sure that you guys check out John's YouTube channel down in the description below, as well as this video. There should have been some cards popping up with his video from, yeah, from please do. this area. Not as good as Sam, but I'm close. <laughs> He's a pretty awesome New York-based travel vlogger, so check him out. And uh, we're going to end this video here. I want to make sure that you guys subscribe and turn those notifications so you don't miss a single video because we're covering every notable neighborhood, every notable borough, and the whole city of New York. So you don't want to miss a single episode of this as well. If you want to support this channel, you can buy some of my merchandise down in the description below or on screen right now. We'll see you guys in the next one. I love you a long time. John, slap him out. <laughs>